in organic farming, one of the great bonuses you get is very soon you realize that it's not you, the farmer, that's cultivating the land. It's the other way. It's the land that is cultivating you. You see, the land, the great provider, a uh, great teacher, if you pay attention and watch, and you tend to learn a lot from, from the land and from farming. So that tends to, tends to make you a more peaceful person, um, a more relaxed person, uh, a healthier person, uh, a better man. Problem is we are trained today to to plan, to focus, to to improve upon things, to do it better, efficiency and blah blah blah, right? So uh, maybe human greed, right? I must learn to specialize, to in. Uh, improve on efficiency, cut down on, on labor, cut down on cost and blah, 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 right? So, and if I were to use compost, it's going to take 30 days. But if I use those powerful chemical fertilizer, oh, I can cut down a week. And uh, volume is funny. So, maybe for that reason, people would go for chemical. Not just the consumer, the farmer also lose in terms of what? In terms of their health. They are exposed to all these harmful chemicals every day. All right? The farm workers are the first to get hurt. All right? And then, where? Our soil will be polluted. Okay? And then our water source, our water will be polluted. Air is polluted. Consumer is polluted. The chemical that is used here the effect we can see many years down the road or many, many miles down the road, you know. So the damage is far and wide. You get a lot of return when you are able to practice this, you know, living in harmony. Nature will provide you tons and tons and tons if you don't interfere, if you don't cause too much damage right so it's a good part of organic farming right ah mas ah here comes with the big bananas the so called pest they also are good neighbors in the sense they respect what we we need. They don't touch them, right? They touch the the, 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 the the parts that we don't need. So these are good friends. They are not pests, right? So why would we choose to use all those harmful chemicals to kill them and kill ourselves? It doesn't make sense. When people see weeds, oh, 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 it's a no-no, right? Weeds rob your plant of nutrient, the fertilizer, okay? But they forgot to look at the other side, right? There's always two sides to a coin, right? They offer good habitat for other insects, yes. right? Insects that may control the unfriendly insects. So they're helping us, right? And then when it is rainy season, this weed help to hold the soil, to prevent soil erosion, right? So we should be grateful to that, okay? When it's a hot, hot, hot season, drought, what do they do? To provide shade, right? They protect the soil again, okay? So the microbes in the soil are happy. It's nice and cool. Instead of dry, 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 then they don't survive. 
when microbes are not happy in the soil, you will not be a happy farmer. The microbes will not be there to help you. Right? So, the so-called weed that people would kill, it's not necessary to kill, right? You just have to change your vision a bit. Right? Learn to live better. And then we learn to respect nature and try to learn the, the, the good way to live in harmony with nature, with other friends, yeah, the birds, the insects. So we learn to live with them in harmony. So when there's harmony, the yin and the yang is balanced, the good and the bad is balanced, then you are a happy farmer, you know. You, of course, you, you, you lose some and at the same time you gain some, right. So there's still some insects that come, but not in large numbers. Then we can accept they eat some and we eat some, yeah. So another reason for 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 big growing a large number of uh, crop is we crop rotate. So what happens is if it's the same crop day in day out is then. A particular kind of uh, nutrient in the soil will be depleted. They keep taking, say, nutrient A. Okay, then soil-bound disease will strive. Okay, what do you do when soil-bound disease is here? You spray chemical to kill them again, right? Again, it's cost, and then again, it is pollution. Okay, we don't do that. We rotate our crop, right? Today is lettuce. After that is uh, say legume is beans after that is uh, sawi right and after every harvest we put in compost again right so we take care of the soil we don't force feed the plants if you force feed them with all those powerful chemical fertilizers they grow fast but then the soil tends to be acidic soon right then you have to deal with another problem okay so our plants here they take their own sweet time to grow naturally there's a reason for, for for the big guy to create things like that. So, and before we know it, let's not be too arrogant, you know, and decide what should live and what should not live. You know, so we should learn. And it can be a very happy experience, a, a, a great life to, to, to learn to share, to appreciate each other, live in harmony. It's good for everybody. <laughs>